Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and it's a very special one because this was a classic film that I grew up with back in the 90s, and it was a childhood favorite of mine, and it's on the palm of my hand already. It's a special free pack of the original The Mighty Ducks trilogy. It has all three movies inside, <laughs> which is right there. <laughs> yeah. Has this classic poster from the D2 The Mighty Ducks movie. Because I remember this poster when I first saw this before it came out. I got this on DVD back in 2004 at Best Buy at a very good price. I believe it was, I got this for like around $20 at the time. It was a lot less when I bought this, but. Considering that it was only three movies inside, no special features included, sadly. But that's okay, because um, it was still worth owning the set alone for, for these three movies. I originally had this on VHS, all three of them. And since this movie was in widescreen, it was definitely worth it. So, this was the whole entire trilogy set that, that they came up with from Disney. Starting with the first movie, The Mighty Ducks, with Emilio Estevez as Coach Bombay, along with the kids that he's coaching with, the Pee Wee Hockey Team. Yep. This was also the first film that introduced me to Danny Tamarelli, who started out, you know, doing a lot of random TV shows, including doing all these shorts for The Adventures of Pete and Pete which later became a TV series on Nickelodeon. So yes, you definitely have a Nickelodeon star right there in this movie. And it was an awesome movie from its time. I remember I wanted to see this movie when it first came out in theaters. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I finally got to see it when I first bought the VHS tape. Although actually, I, I first rented the film on VHS before I bought it. So it was a good deal. Um, I never got tired of this movie. I would watch this over and over um, during my spare time. It's still a classic um, in today's generation. Still, it's definitely worth watching. It is predictable at times. Uh, I sense that. But it, it was sweet. It became a, a highly successful movie, earning... It, 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 its budget was $10 million when it was made. It earned like around 50 million, so it became very successful. That it spawned two sequels, and of course had a TV series later on in 1996, and had a TV movie in '97. So yeah, although that was a different series, despite the fact that it's it had brought up its name. But uh, anyway, the sequel that includes D2: The Mighty Ducks. And this was the movie I actually got to see in theaters for the very first time because I really wanted to see this movie prior to owning the first movie on VHS. And I was really excited when I first saw it because this introduced me to Keenan Thompson playing the role as Russ. Oh, and he was hilarious in this movie, even though he had to start mocking the Team USA team. Um, his famous quote was, It's knuckle puck time! <laughs> and he had one of the best, you know, knuckle pucks that he's ever done once he get to it. This was a classic. Uh, right there. I think this was one of the best sequels I've ever seen. In fact, it was, it was even better than the first movie. It's definitely worth a shot. <laughs> but then comes the third sequel which I also saw in theaters, but not nearly as good as the first two films, though. But I think it made it up for the fact that they had to make a third sequel. Unfortunately, it was considered to be the last film of the series, and that's, of course, The Free the Mighty Ducks. Which, unfortunately, Emilio Estevez wasn't on screen very often, although I heard that from the reports that he actually got to be in this film for free. I mean, he didn't get paid for this, surprisingly enough. 
But I guess, you know, he had to take his option prior to all these films that he had to do. Because he was also directing a movie called The War at Home, which he also stars in it. And he wrote the screenplay. So I guess that might be the reason why, you know, he had to want offer the job to be in the third sequel, but not very often. And uh, half of the cast from the original film, some of them were there, some of them aren't. Um, then again, the second movie had that same issue too, which was a shame, but had a lot of funny pranks in this movie, just like the first two, because you know what they were going against. The entire team went to the academy, you know, they had to deal with another coach named Coach Orion, you know, who started out as a jerk at first, but then he turns out you know, a nice coach after all, you know, cliches, cliches all around but <laughs> but it, it did play a tribute to the, the fact that this was going to be the last film of the series it wasn't going to be a fourth one although there, it was rumored about that but that never happened so I think we can safe aside that I'm glad it ended just right when they wanted to but <laughs> that's what we had to get for for these movies so I'm going to be reviewing all three movies of the Mighty Ducks, starting with the very first one, The Mighty Ducks. It stars Emilio Estevez, Josh Acklin, Lance Smith, Heidi Kling, Joseph Summer, Joshua Jackson, Eldon Henson, Sean Weiss, and Danny Tamborelli. And it's written by Stephen Brill, who also makes a cameo appearance in the film in, in a small role and it's directed by Stephen Herrick who went on to do a lot of films you know, such as uh, 101 Dalmatians and, and so on <laughs> the movie begins when a successful defense attorney in Minneapolis Gordon Bombay played by Emilio Estevez whose courtroom antics had earned him no respect but after being arrested for drunk driving, Bombay has been sentenced to community service by coaching the local District 5 PB hockey team. But Bombay himself had a history with the sport as he once entered a PB hockey team known as the Hawks. Unfortunately, he blew a penalty shot, causing his team and the disappointment of his hyper-competitive coach, Jack Wiley, played by Lance Smith. When Bombay first met the team, he realized that the kids have no practice facility, equipment, and the ability to go with it. The first game with the team was against Bombay's old team. Once again, with Jack Riley as the coach, things didn't go so well as it turned out to be, as they were losing the game many times. And while they couldn't listen to any of his coach antics, Bombay decided to meet his old and mentor, Hans, played by Josh Acklin, and Hans discovered that he actually quit the hockey team due to the fact that his father died four months before the championship game. So prior to this, Bombay had approached his boss, Gerald Duckworth, played by Joseph Summer, to sponsor the team with a new name and a new equipment and new players as well. The new players they added were figure skating siblings Tommy, played by Danny Timberelli, and Tammy Duncan, played by Jane Plank. And of course, a slap shot specialist and enforcer, Philton Reed, played by Elton Henson. But Bombay decided to add another player in the team, and it turned out that he's one of the Hawks team. Adam Banks was played by Vincent LaRusso and his goal was he thought this would be a good idea for the Ducks to play with him so that way the team would be more successful on hand but unfortunately the Ducks themselves thought this was a bad idea and it wouldn't work out for the team at all but once they got used to it after a while they decided to team up once again with the Hawks team for the PV championship game I'm willing to go to win no matter what happens. And I really did enjoy this film when I first saw this a long time ago. 
and I and I have enjoyed this film ever since because it had a lot of funny moments in the movie it was very hilarious especially with the characters and so on Neil Westerman did a very good job playing that role as Gordon Bombay because he was definitely the right choice to play him since we knew he had a history behind all of this Lance Smith did a great job playing Jack Wiley, you know, the hyper competitive coach who, who teach him the ropes until things have been going wrong over the years. Since you know he had to deal with his bitterness and the fact that they were both, you know, rivals to each other. But the kids in the film were excellent and hilarious all the way around, and especially with um, Charlie. And played by Joshua Jackson, of course, went on to do the TV show Dawson's Creek. You know, prior to the series that he's been doing, you know, Goldberg, you know, played by Sean Rice, was was hilarious as the goalie. You know, who couldn't forget that scene when he has all gotten tied up inside a, a huge net and he gets hit by a thousand pucks. <laughs> yeah, of course he got stuck in there and he was trying to drag it all around. And of course, you probably remember the scene where MC Gainley played a limo driver, you know, who's with Bombay. When Filton hits uh, the limo driver's window with the puck, which was an accident, yeah, it was, it was just hilarious. There were, there were a lot of great scenes in this movie. It was really cool to see what hockey was really about, so they knew, they knew exactly how this team really had to go against. It's really cool, and it was very hilarious, and I was amazed that it was very successful as it turned out, but it was great to see this movie many times already. This was at the time when they were really coming up with sports movies like this, you know, back in the 90s, you know, we had movies like The Sandlot, Little Giants, Rookie of the Year. And so on. I guess they just wanted to join in with the Bad News Bears, which was made back in the 70s. So they figured, yeah, they want to come up with its own idea of this. And it works. I really enjoyed it. One thing I noticed, though, was that there was a music issue rights here, because when I saw this movie on TV recently, at this rate, HBO, I noticed that they changed the track. They had a song called The Outfields, Winning It All. Yeah, while well, the second track was Queen's uh, We Will Walk You. But I know for the fact that every home video release, as opposed to the theatrical release, I believe, had the two tracks for Queen, you know, such as We Will Walk You and We Are the Champions. So it's like, yeah, they must have done some changes. You know, It might have been some, some music rice issue. You know. but I don't know. It, it's kind of strange that to see two versions uh, having different music tracks. But if you ever get a chance to see this movie, definitely buy the DVD. I hope this gets a Blu-ray release someday, because I know Heavyweights got released recently. This will definitely be a treat. So anyway, I give the Mighty Ducks quack, 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 five stars. And stay tuned for the first two sequels that I'm about to review, D2 The Mighty Ducks, and the free the mighty ducks so anyway i'm joseph a sabora and i'll see you later bye